if you're dealing with high blood pressure and want to avoid a pile of medications, or if you are simply looking for ways to naturally lower your blood pressure, avoid a heart attack and a stroke, then this video is for you. There are countless supplements out there advertised for high blood pressure. But today, I'm going to simplify things. I'll introduce you to three simple changes that you can make that could radically improve your blood pressure and in fact might even help you reduce or eliminate the need for lifelong medication. Hello friends, I'm Dr. T, board certified cardiologist and like many of you, a high blood pressure patient myself. Let me give you my personal journey with high blood pressure. In my mid 30s, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure and uh, by the time I reached 40, I was already on some medications for uh, high blood pressure. And despite following my doctor's advice, by the time I was in my uh, 60s, my condition worsened and I got into a lot of trouble. That's when I started looking for alternative treatments for cardiovascular disease, uh, particularly high blood pressure, beyond conventional medicine that I was trained in and practiced. One of the reasons I'm sharing this information with you is because of the incredible results that I've seen over the last uh, 10 years. And what I've learned not only helped uh, me get off medication, but has helped many other people. Today, my blood pressure is perfectly normal, less than 120 over 80, and I'm off my blood pressure medications. So let's talk about what you can add to your uh, diet that could dramatically lower your blood pressure. So let's dive in and answer these four questions. What does potassium do? How much potassium do you need? How do you increase your intake of potassium? And who should not increase the potassium intake? And who should not use salt substitutes or potassium supplements? What does potassium do? Potassium is the most abundant cation inside our cells, and it helps your nerves to function and your muscles to contract, and it helps your heartbeat stay uh, regular, and also helps uh, move nutrients into the cells and waste products out of the uh, cells. And there is no doubt that a diet rich in potassium helps to lower your blood pressure. How does potassium lower blood pressure? There are two mechanisms. Number one, uh, potassium contracts the sodium. And more potassium in your diet, more sodium is excreted by your kidneys into the urine. In addition, potassium has the ability to relax your blood vessels, your arteries, lowering your blood pressure. Let's address question number two. How much potassium do we need? The uh, recommendation is you should have between 3,500 and 4,700 milligrams of potassium a day. However, studies show the average American only gets 2,400 milligrams of potassium a day. And very few people, less than 2%, reach the recommended amount of 47 milligrams uh, of potassium a day. Uh, this is why I believe it's so important to understand uh, just how critical potassium is for your health. Uh, studies have shown that increasing potassium intake can significantly reduce your blood pressure. And you could expect between 5 and 10 millimeters of mercury decrease in your blood pressure. And to put things into perspective, most blood pressure medications are approved with a reduction of just 5 to 6 millimeters of mercury. So the impact of potassium can be even greater than some of the medications that you may be prescribed. If your diet is deficient in potassium, taking medications might just be treating a potassium deficiency. Why not simply increase your potassium intake and potentially avoid uh, blood pressure medications? When you look at clinical trials on average, the dose of potassium was added was about 2,500 milligrams. That added to what the average American uh, gets puts you at the recommendation level. And the question is, how do you increase your potassium intake? Let's look at three options. Let's start with the diet. There are uh, many ways to increase your potassium intake through your diet. And here's a list of potassium-rich foods that you can easily incorporate into your diet, from apricots, from 
uh, lentils, to a corn squash, to dried prunes, to raisins, potatoes, uh, kidney beans, and even uh, bananas. And to learn more about potassium-rich foods, check out this video titled Top 10 Potassium-Rich Foods to Lower Your Blood Pressure. I'll put a link above and on the description below. In my personal situation, my old diet was the same as your diet, the standard American uh, diet. A lot of processed foods and not enough fruits and not enough vegetables. So I've changed that uh, significantly. And today I'm essentially plant-based, although I eat uh, fish as well. And I make sure I have four or five servings of fruits every day. Let's look at another option to add potassium to your diet. If your diet alone isn't providing enough potassium, you could uh, turn to salt substitutes. And some of the salt substitutes are 100% potassium uh, chloride and contain no sodium. And just a quarter of a teaspoon of these substitutes contain 1,250 milligrams of potassium chloride, equivalent of 650 milligrams of elemental potassium. And there are salt substitutes that are 50% potassium chloride and 50% sodium chloride, which can help you if you're not used to a full potassium substitute. I can tell you personally, I cannot tell the difference, so I use 100% potassium chloride. Let's look at the third option, supplements. They are certainly an option if you need an extra boost. However, be aware that most over-the-counter potassium supplements only contain 99 milligrams per pill. Just to get the full extra 2,500 milligrams recommended, you, it's not practical, you need to take a, a basket of pills. However, now we have high potassium supplements like these two shown here, that contain 2,000 milligrams per serving, and they define the serving as two capsules. Let's look at question number four. Who should not take salt substitutes and potassium supplementations? There is a reason why most of the over-the-counter supplements only contain 99 milligrams of potassium. And if you're considering a potassium supplement or salt substitute, uh, please consult your doctor, your healthcare, uh, provider because excessive amount of potassium under certain circumstances could be lethal. If you have any chronic kidney disease, if you're taking certain medications like uh, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors like lisinopril, if you take some angiotensin converting blockers like losartan, certain water pills called potassium sparing diuretics, pranolactone and miloride, that puts you at a higher risk to have too much potassium in your system. And excessive potassium can literally lead to a cardiac arrest. And I can, uh, I can tell you, I've dealt with many cases in my career where patients were uh, this close to a cardiac arrest because they presented with excessive amount of potassium in their blood, a condition we call hyperkalemia. So potassium, in fact, could be a game chamber when it comes to managing your blood pressure. And by simply increasing your potassium intake, you could significantly lower your blood pressure and improve your overall health. And if you're looking for natural ways to control your blood pressure, watch this video, blood pressure, top seven drinks to lower it naturally without medications. I'll put the link above and on the description below. Thank you for watching. Please like and share this video with your family or friends. And don't forget your health, your most precious asset. Take control. See you next video.